Well, it's me, Maud Ellen. I come all the way from Possum Hollow, Mississippi to see you folks. That there lady in the back so was nice to tell me, said, would you come up and entertain? And I said, yes, ma'am. How much you paying me? And she said, well, uh, I said, well, don't worry about it. I had to come see my niece, Melanie, anyway. And then I had to come see my cousin, so it's on the house this time. I want to tell you, just the other day, I had to call 911. Well, this, this fella, he crawled in my kitchen window, and I knocked him out on a linoleum with my skillet. Yes, ma'am, my skillet. And I looked down at him, I said, what am I going to do? And I started getting scared. And I said, well, I better call 911. And I'm thinking, how, how do I call 911? And then I go, okay, it's 911. And the little dispatcher girl answered the phone, asked me, ma'am, what is your emergency? And I said, there's this fella on my kitchen floor. She says, well, can you tell me who you are? I said, well, you know who it is. I said, it's Maud Ellen Brooks. Ma'am, you're gonna have to tell me who you are and where you live. I said, you know where I live? I live at 259 Humpernickel Lane. Okay, so she asked me, and I said, yes, ma'am. I said, it's Maud Ellen Brooks. I live at 259 Humpernickel Lane. Because I know I hear her typing in the background, type, 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 and type. And I said, don't you remember I told you kindergarten girl? And I went to school with your Aunt Evelyn. And don't you know I'm weirder? Because she asked about Jasper. He's been gone for three years. She knew I was with her. How come she asked me if I was about him? It hurt my feelings. And then she asked me again what I needed. I said, well, is this guy out on my board? What am I going to do? What are you going to do? And she says, what well, is, is he breathing? And I said, well, I don't know. So she said, check it. And I said, well, how are you supposed to check? Well, reach down there and feel and see if he's okay. <coughs> so I put the phone down, and I picked up my 38, and I shot him two more times. Ooh. Two more times I shot him. I said, picked up the phone and said, I don't think this fella's going to make no hospital. You better call the coroner. I think he's dead. <coughs> well, there was silence on the other end of the phone. She says, Miss Brooks, I'm going to call the police over there first. And I said, yeah, I reckon you ought to do just that. Well, let me tell you, I teach Sunday school at Possum Holler Baptist Church. I got a good group of ladies, and we there have a good time every Sunday morning. Till until I smelled something in the room, and it wasn't nobody had had no accident of any kind. It was smelling of spirits. And no, it wasn't the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. It was in somebody's purse. Uh -huh. So I went around smelling, smelling till I got down to a friend of mine named Idell Pope. And she was grinning like a dog passing a peach seed she was. And I said, I did what you got in your purse. <laughs> and she giggles. Nothing, no, nothing. 
I yanked that purse open and she had one of them little bottles of peach brain in there. She had been nipping in the bathroom before she come to the Sunday school class. I sent her butt home. I did. Ha, there she come to my Sunday school class, reeking the spirits. Well, she said it was the only thing that made her feel good anymore. I said, well, maybe you and the good Lord need to have y'all talk. Well, I go to Faraday, and I make the best apple pie. They awarded me first place when they had the pie tasting contest. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, ma'am, it sure was, and I was so tickled to tell them how to make it, except for it was missing one true ingredient. But I wasn't about to tell them, because, you know, that's Bob's secret special on making peach pies. I couldn't tell them. It was a little bit of x lax having it done. You know, you could put that in the chocolate pudding, chocolate pie. But don't be ugly and do that to nobody. They'll get the runs. And then I make some of the best fried green tomatoes you ever seen in your life. Folks get cornmeal. Some people get flour, and boy, I can get them to cook and put them in a little hog lard and heat it up good. Ooh, let me tell you, ain't nothing better than fried green tomatoes. Y'all seen that show, Fried Green Tomatoes, right? That movie? Well, there's a movie called Fried Green Tomatoes. Ma'am, did you say something? Oh, I'm sorry, you were speaking to somebody else. Apologize, I didn't mean to butt in your conversation. Preach. Oh, but do you do you know sometimes I come to Jackson and I go to that there ag museum down the street where they got the mules. I come up here to see my niece and visit with her a couple of days and first thing you know she's posted on Facebook her mom Aunt Maud Ellen is coming to town. Everybody run for your life, run for your life. Here comes Maud Ellen. Well, I'm not that bad. I can't help a dime town's biggest gossip. I mean, somebody's got to keep it going through the grapevine right on. How many of you have never been known for gossip? Oh, mercy, there are folks in here. Well, I, will, I bet you're just worse than me. Let me tell you what I tried to do one day. I ain't got no internet at the house, so I sneaked up into the churches office one Sunday while the choir was going and started poking buttons and got on there trying to get in touch with Medea. And I said, Lord Medea, please come down here and help me clean up Mississippi. And do you know I had that taped on YouTube two days before the governor let everybody out of jail. Okay. I timed that just right because I told them, I said, they got rats. Rats and rats of all kinds. I didn't realize it. two days before Haley decided to turn everybody out of jail. There I was sitting there trying to talk to Tyler Perry and tell him to come down here and hit me clean Mississippi up. It was the darndest thing. And then I got on there, I thought, found out it was so fun, I started acting the fool most every day. And then my girlfriends got tired, so you're going to hang up in that office all the time. And then they had this cat, church cat, that was always coming up and rubbing on my leg, wanting to be petting on it. I had to swat the cat a couple of times, and they said, don't abuse that cat. I said, well, he's trying to work my pantyhose. You know, them pantyhose nowadays, they cost a lot of money. You go to Walmart and, and try to figure out getting you a pair of pantyhose. They ain't cheap like they was years ago, and then, of course, they don't fit me like they did years ago either. It's the darndest thing. They make them for control, and extra butt control, and extra leg control. Well, I lost so much weight, I didn't need no tummy control no more. I just needed some butt control. So I got my butt under under control with that one pair of hoes. Kind of rhymed it. But yeah, I'm telling you, I just love getting out and talking to people and entertaining them and having a good time. And I go different places. And sometimes I change my hair color. That makes me a soul duck. They say women that dye the hair got secrets. Secrets. Well, that's what my grandmama used to say. She says, a woman that'll dye her hair has got secrets. It's got what? 
got secrets. You know, keeping the truth from folks. The only thing she would try to do is try to keep herself a little bit better looking to let that glory out come on out. Mercy, mercy, mercy. I love just talking. I love, I can't sing real good, but I can talk, I can gossip, and carry on like the most run of them. I can. Well, when we was having uh, the forest day one day, I met them little, little scout, I had some scout troopers come through. Little girl scouts who come through and they wanted me to show them a nature trail. I didn't know it running along the creek behind where the folks was nudies. Lord, them fuck them, them parents was upset with me. They said, Maud Ellen, why did you take our children down there by the river backside? I said, well, they need to find out early. Where babies come from, they should find out early. Was a bit of holding thing to see. I'm like this, I don't try to just put it to anybody. These children need to be taught what makes these babies down to have to have too many babies. Youngins, I mean youngins having babies. They ought to get engaged first, get out of school, get married, and then have the babies, not everything backwards. You know, have the baby, get engaged, and then get married. Yeah, okay, well that's the way our society kind of does things. We need more folks out there to show these young people how it was when we was growing up. Well, I didn't even get to shave my legs until I was 13, 14 years old. My grandmama said I didn't need to think about anything like that or even putting any kind of makeup on until I was 13 or 14. She wouldn't have it, no. She drove the school bus off the road one day. She did. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Preach. Yes, ma'am. Preach. It's an awful thing, you know. Growing up, how many, how many of y'all have actually milked a cow and turned butter? Amen. I remember the morning after morning, my grandmother and I would go down to that barn, and she had warm water in that bucket. I said, Granny, what you got? Have warm water. You got to wash her teeth off, or she'll kick you over. <laughs> and I was like, wash? She says, just watch me. So she had the cap tied off, and she Amen. went down there and was putting a little uh, milk, cotton seed feed meal in the trough, and the cow went to eat, and she squatted down and washed that cow's teeth off, and then she commenced to milk in that, milk in that white in the bucket. Yes. And it was so pretty and frothy, it made the best cream, and it made the best blackberry cobbler, ooh! And that's where I had to get that butt control. <laughs> What, Cause that kind of stuff will grow a butt on you, will. But I tell you what, my grandmother taught me a lot of things. She didn't teach me house things. She always made me go to the barn and clean the stalls out and stuff. She did. I just I grew up that way, and then when I married my husband and moved to Possum Hollow, things were just different. Close knit little community, and everybody knew each other, and they didn't have to lock the door at night, and they didn't have to lock the windows at night because everybody knew. Everybody. Amen, baby. Now you got the bars on your windows and you got to keep a gun close by, and then you got folks trying to rob and stuff. I don't know what's come up with this world of ours. Amen. But I hope the good Lord will come on before it gets too much worse than what it is because I just don't think we can stand much more. But I remember a world where we had American pine, apple pine. God bless America, praying before when we had school and teachers and they just not into that. They don't want to do it. They want to take a, a minute of silence. A minute of silence. What is that? I say let's take a minute of prayer and bag talk to the good Lord. Prayer. Yes, ma'am. Well prayer. that's me, that's my old Ellen Brooks. And I'm from Possum Hollow, Mississippi, and I sure appreciate you letting me come up here talk to you today. And I hope it's been inspired. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very so, let's give Mom Ellen a hand. Thank you, thank you very much. Ladies, y'all have any questions for Mom Ellen? She's going to show us pictures of her. Pictures? Where do you got that all set up for? Uh, that's 
where I can make a fool of myself. Oh, for you see them? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I thought you were going to show us something. I can put it on the internet. She, I'll send her the link to it later, but i got to edit it first. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I just thought you were going to put something up there. Oh, I don't know how to hook all that in. If I had the USB cable, I probably couldn't. She probably doesn't want to fool with it. Well, no.